big about that. And then we'll have That's right. That is right. That worked out pretty well. The coffee table fits nice with the shelf. Yeah. No, it's great. It does. like small enough that it like doesn't it's still not as wide as the overall couch even with that small section. Morning Amanda. Yeah no it's perfect. Time to make coffee. <laughs> Coffee, coffee, coffee. Good morning, Blueberry. Your slime is so confusing. Why is your slime confusing, Snakey? Why is your slime confusing, darling? What did it say? Did it say, I'm a slime? Because that would scare and confuse me if my slime said I'm a slime. Hey, Sinny, how are you feeling? Are you feeling any better? I'd be happy if I said that. You 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 want your slime to talk to you? Yeah. Okay. Secret boyfriend wants his slime to talk to him. Does anybody else want their slime to talk to them? Thoughts, hopes, dreams about your slimes? Dream slimes. Dream slimes. Thanks for reminding me. I made coffee an hour ago and is sitting in the machine. Wah wah. Oh Emily. That's my move. I've lost my sense of smell, but I can breathe now, so I'll take it. Ooh. It's very rippy and clumpy, and it's very sticky like slime. Hello. Um, well, honey, remember how we talked about because you guys have different ingredients in Europe. I'm not going to be 100% able to help you, but if you tell me what kind of slime it is, I can try to help you. But I can't promise because I don't. I don't know all of the ingredients that you guys have compared to what we have. Hey, Becca. My husband was making me smell your slimes to test if I could smell. That's a video. That's a video. I wish I wish that anyone who was losing their sense of smell would do that. That's funny to me. I'm not sad. I mean, I'm not. It's not funny to me that you're sick, but he's funny. Good morning. Guys, we're going to do book club in a new location today. Can we order a slime without signing up or do we have to sign up? What do you mean by sign up? Do you mean like make an account on my website? You can check out as a guest if you want. It's faster to make an account because it has like your info in it and everything, but you don't have to. We established I really couldn't smell when both leather and red is, red is such a strong smell. Red is such a strong smell. Leather is like mediumly strong, but red is extremely scented. Like burn your nose scented almost. I love it. I like those kind of scents, but yeah. If you can't smell red, you have no sense of smell. That's true. Um, it's like, I don't know if you guys, if any of you were following me when I started the, um, iceberg series, like way, way back in January. Um, how would we order a slime? I'm so confused as how to purchase. Oh, my restock is later this week. Um, good morning, tomato. So later this week, you can just purchase it on the website. Um, usually it sells out pretty quickly. So I would come on time. The restock is the 26th at 6 PM. It's clear based glue, salt and food coloring. Oh Yeah. Honey, I would just throw it away. If you put salt in your slime, it's over, unfortunately, sweetheart. I'm not I'm not trying to be mean, but there's no saving that at this point, darling. I'm so sorry. Salt salt will eat slime. It will kill it. Um Yeah, no problem, Emily. No problem at all. Restock is coming. Here, babe, your your coffee's ready. Yeah. Time for coffee for Sasha. Good morning, Becky. Good morning. Good morning. <coughs> it's great to stay out late, which we didn't because we had a delivery early this morning. Good morning. Good morning to you. Yeah, it was still earlier than I thought it would be. Way earlier than we thought it would be. He's good, Cinny. Thank you. Why can't my brain remember restocked at this time? I don't know. I need to just make a new video about it. It's not just you, Becca. I keep forgetting also. It's okay. I'll make a video today, Becca, and, and we'll, we'll make a whole thing. Shining bright. Yes, our couch. 
We got our couch finally. It's only been eight weeks, but we got it. It has been eight weeks. It was the whole eight weeks. The whole eight weeks. They took the whole eight weeks to get us the couch, but now we have a place to sit. I do, Becca. I do. They just came in like maybe two or three days ago. You need some? Hey, Shira. Good. Why is my coffee not making? Good morning. Good morning. It's great to stay out late. Good morning. Good morning to you. Microphones are fun. I agree. Oh, fair enough, Becca. I can make that happen for you. When the band began to play, the stars were shining bright. Tell the man on his way, it's too late to say goodnight. Wrong song. <laughs> also a good song though. Hey, Ray. He was singing Christmas songs. My favorite. There's nothing in the world I love more than a Christmas song. I love your pants, they are so cute. They're part of my pajamas. Santa Claus is coming to town. Miles sings the good morning part and then makes up his own words. I support him in that. I totally support him in that. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. You guys are gonna get so sick of me during Christmas time. I'm never gonna stop singing Christmas carols. It's gonna be crazy! He also sings Christmas songs. Good! I told Mark he must bring the Christmas tree up this weekend so I can put it up next week. Yeah, we're gonna get a special one. We have a whole theme planned out, so it's very exciting. I think my machine needs to be de -scowled. so we're gonna do that later today. It's gonna be okay, little guy. I will take care of you. You are way too happy for a Monday. Well, we got our couch, so. I know. Yes, agreed, Becky. Agreed. Christmas is wonderful. I love all of it. I love the colors. I love the songs. I love the present giving. My theme is my childhood Christmas ornaments from Hallmark everywhere. I love that. Okay, that's a legit reason to be happy. It is a legit reason to be happy. We've been waiting eight weeks for this couch. Eight long weeks. Uh, we have a Christmas tree theme. <laughs> You're very funny, Becca. Very funny. I'm going to crawl into this corner of this new couch. Oh, so nice. My theme is get away from my tree with a side of put that ornament back. That's because you have too many children. Many. She's got four kids, and three of them are the same age. Well, that's tough. Yeah. <laughs> that's tough. It is tough. It is. Yeah, well, yeah, you're right. When will your next slime live be? Can't remember if I already asked. You didn't ask. It will probably be tomorrow, tomorrow night. Um, we usually do slime lives at night, but not on Mondays. All right, we are reading. No such thing. My dad was the youngest of 13. Secret boyfriend's dad's the youngest of nine. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not 13, but I mean, after 10, it might as well. Oh, well, I guess it's not after 10. I can't even count. I should just shut up. It was almost 10. Yep. Very nearly. <laughs> Becca goes, pass. She's done. Although, Becca, you sometimes ask for one more. Think about it. At some point, they're just watching each other and your work's done. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like, it's a perpetual motion machine for the kids. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes Becca asks for one more and her wife is like, no, that's enough. No. No, too many babies. No. Y'all Californians, it's snowing here. Snowing already? Oh my gosh, whoa. Sure. I have it had and maybe could do one more, maybe. Wait, how many total do you have, Amanda? If a couple of my kids weren't India, I'd definitely want more. Yeah, but also, I think, Becca, if a couple of your kids weren't all the same age, maybe it would be easier. <laughs> right? 
Like, if you have one that's like 10, one that's seven, one that's five, and one that's three, you're like, okay, well. Yeah, well, the seven year old watches the five year old. Right. The three year old watches the nine year old, and et cetera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you've got a whole bunch of three year olds and four year olds all at the same time, they're about to turn four, right? They turn four in like a week, not even a week. Yes, then I wouldn't have had baby stage stolen from me. Yeah, you did. It was stolen from you. Anything more than four is all the same. Yeah, yeah. I agree, actually, except when it's triplets. I think the exception is is multiples to that, right? Oh, um, she said she's in, in Alberta, north of Montana. Oh, my God. The person you asked about the snow. That's too much. Yeah, Becca, you're deep in it with three at the same age. Yeah, no, for sure. I have five, 23, 20. Oh, but, okay, you have 20-year-olds. They can take care of themselves. <laughs> oh, are you serious? <laughs> Take it back. <laughs> Maybe some what, of them. What's are... harder, a three-year-old or a twenty-three-year-old? <laughs> yeah, um, Tigger Boy wants to know what's harder, a three-year-old or a twenty-three-year-old. I think a twenty-three-year-old would be harder than three-year-old. I love three-year-olds. I think they're great. Yeah. Positive no note: goodness. You go through the terrible threes all at once. True. Yeah. The Three nagers. Yeah, I agree. Four. Oof. Yeah. <clears throat> we usually get a good dump of snow before Halloween. Wow. A 17 year old harder than all of them. It's true. It's true. A 17 year old, a uh, girl or boy. Yeah. Amanda, what's harder teenage girls or teenage boys? <laughs> I think I already know the answer. Girls. I think girls are harder when they're teenagers. I think girls are easier when they're little and harder when they're teenagers. Yeah. My 20 year old still lives at home because he's my kidney transplant kid and he needs help. Oh, but that's different. That's not like, that's not a kid being like a pain in the behind. That's like a legitimate thing. I have a take care of a 33 year old and she's a handful. Really, Shelly? Parenting 20s just seems like doubling as a walking ATM for me. <laughs> That's funny, right? But right, your, your 20 year old is your, wait, your bonus daughter is in her 20s, right? Because you, you have littles too. The Cabbage Patch kids are littles, right? Um. It's hard for me to look after myself, let alone kids in a hubby. Yeah, that's fair. I don't know that I can. <laughs> Are you having trouble looking after yourself, honey? Uh, don't mind. <laughs> You're on the new couch. Right. It's great. Frederick, Frederick von Couchenstein. Yeah, that one's better. Two mm -hmm. bonus daughters in their 20s. Yeah, okay, so I was right about that. See, I, um, I stand by my conviction that I have a lore and a history for everyone in our group. My mom said adult kids are harder because she no longer had control. Ooh, harsh. Oh. No good. Wait, Shelly, are you 33? No way. Jesus year. Jesus year? I'm 33 Jesus year. I don't know. Is 33 Jesus year? 33. Oh. Why did I not know that? Okay, well then I got the joke, Shelly. What was the joke? She said, I, she said, I have to take care of a 33 year old and she's a handful. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> <laughs> My babies were awesome in their teen years, but they were hella little. See, that's what I was saying. I think little girls are easier and teenage boys are easier. Oh, Emily, that makes perfect sense. Uh, not a hundred percent on teenage boys, of course. No, but like. This song. Yeah. Did you assume I'm, I thought you were my age, Shelly. I did. I think the thing that makes teenage boys easier is uh, they're not cute and nobody likes them. So it's just like, whatever. They live, they live. <laughs> That's so mean. What do you mean? They're not cute and nobody likes them? Yes. That's so not nice. Oh, well, tell that to society. I. I <laughs> <laughs> to say to that they all agree right do you all agree people usually think i'm at least five years older than i am i i i think so tressa who's not here right now but is in this club sent a meme last night and at the end of it she was like that's fair shira that she was like we all look really good because she was showing us people from previous generations who are our age and they look rough you guys we all look really good for our age <laughs> um Anyway, let's read chapter four because I got to get to the post office with a lot of orders for you guys. So we're going to read chapter four, which we've all been waiting for because it is called Goose on the Lamb. Whenever I was worried about leaving that. 
My mother-in-law said it would be fine. We just said, whoa, that's not good, Becca. I don't love that for your mother-in-law. Yeah, that's not okay. There's no, there's, there's, there's none of that. There's that, I, bleh. <laughs> yeah, she said her mother, so uh, her oldest son, Max, there was complications. And so she said when they were afraid of losing him, her mother-in-law said, it's okay, you can just make another. Whoa. Yeah, it's not, that's not how any of that works. <laughs> Yeah. Was she from the Dust Bowl era? Yeah, like, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a wild thing to <laughs> it's say. It's like two generations off from saying that. Yeah. <laughs> Liz was filtered? Oh, Liz dropped an F bomb when she was she she said she's in her eighties though. Okay. So she's just above my mom even. Yeah, but still not in like the generation. Liz like, is allowed to be angry about this situation because we love Max. Max is our, Max is part of the reason that we're all even here. So he's God. Yep, Max is God. Don't <laughs> tell him that, Becca. Don't tell him. I know exactly how he'll respond to that. Do not, do not share this information with that young man when he gets home for from school. If my slime could talk, my slime would be very angry and mean all the time. Well, it's probably because you put salt in it. You made it salty, get it? <laughs> that was funny, right? It's very salty. It's very salty. Okay, let's read chapter four, Goose on the Lamb. Alex opened her eyes. To her astonishment, she was standing on a cloud in the center of a ferocious storm. Rain blew from every direction and soaked her to the bone. She wrapped her arms around her body and shivered in the freezing wind. Lightning flashed in the clouds below her feet. The thunder was deafening and if dozens of cannons, as if dozens of cannons were being fired all around her. She had no memory of where she was or how she'd gotten there. It was spotty at best. The last thing Alex remembered was standing in the grand hall of the fairy palace. She was arguing with the fairy council about the masked man. The longer their discussion went on, the angrier Alex became. Emerald to question Connor about Alex's reliability and that's when her memory faded completely. She could only recall quick glimpses of what had happened, but it didn't take long for her to put the pieces together. Oh no. Alex gasped, what have I done? It was like recalling a nightmare. The fairy council had dethroned her as fairy godmother. Alex's anger took control of her body and she retaliated by attacking them. The more lucid she became, the more the storm around her began to calm and dissipate. The rain stopped and the cool wind came to a halt. Alex looked around trying to determine her whereabouts, but all she saw were thick gray clouds for miles and miles. Alex chose a direction and walked through the clouds like quick, fluffy quicksand. In the direction she could barely make out, in the distance, she could barely make out the silhouette of a massive structure with several towers. When she squinted, she saw a large wooden door. Alex recognized this place immediately. Oh, it's the giant's castle. Alex's stomach dropped. The castle instantly reminded her of the time she and her friends narrowly escaped being clawed and eaten by the giant cat that lived inside. Despite her initial instinct to run in the opposite direction, Alex figured the castle might be the best place to go given the circumstances. She doubted the fairy council would look for her there. Perhaps that's why she'd taken herself into the sky all along. She continued toward the castle and her feet eventually found a solid path that curved up to the castle's enormous front door. Alex almost crawled under the door, like she and her friends had before, but luckily she had learned a few tricks since then. She waved her hand over the door and it began to open. Once the door had opened wide enough, Alex went inside and the door shut behind her. The, ca the castle was exactly as Alex remembered. The stone tiles of the floor were the size of swimming pools. Each step of the massive staircase was the height of a building. You could probably fit an entire fairy palace inside the entrance hall alone. However, one thing was very different. The last time she was in the castle, the floor had been covered in hundreds of bird carcasses, victims of the giant cat's appetite. But now it was completely clean. In fact, the whole castle had a very lived in feel. Alex gulped nervously. More than just the giant cat was living in the castle now. She walked into the room to the right of the entrance hall and found the castle's sitting room. Each piece of furniture was the size of a house. A pile of timbered trees burned in the fireplace like logs. An enormous armchair had been placed close to the fire. Its back was facing Alex, but she could tell someone or something was sitting in it. Squaw! Alex jumped. Perched at the very top of the armchair was a familiar goose. The 
the bird was enormous, but it's still dwarfed in comparison to the giant's castle. Lester, Alex asked, what are you doing here? The goose ruffled his feathers excitedly. Squaw, what is it, boy? No, oh, sorry. Nope. Ah, what is it, boy? A raspy voice said from the chair. Alex sighed with relief. She was among friends. Mother Goose, is that you? Alex called up. Alex, Mother Goose said, what are you doing here? I, I was going to ask you the same thing. Lester, be a deer and help girl up here, Mother Goose instructed. Lester glided to the ground and Alex climbed up on his back. He flew her to the seat of the armchair, which was like a balcony overlooking the fireplace. Mother Goose sat in the rocking chair, her large traveling basket at her side, and she sipped from a large thermos that was undoubtedly filled with her favorite bubbly beverage. Hiss! Alex shrieked. The giant cat was seated on the arm of the chair. He glared at her and arched his back as he hissed. Obviously, he remembered Alex from when they first met. He raised a paw and extended his claws, ready to strike. Easy, George Clooney, Mother Goose said to the cat. She's a friend. She's not gonna harm you. Don't make me spray you with water again. The giant cat retracted his claws and slouched, still sending Alex a nasty look. She was surprised to see how obedient he was. Is the cat yours now? She asked. Now, I was never planning on it, but someone has to teach this giant sack of gluten some manners, Mother Goose said. He almost ate Lester the first time we came in here, but I put him on a strict fish and grain diet. The cat glanced at Lester with hunger in his eyes. Clearly, he was still tempted. And you named him George Clooney? Alex asked with a laugh. Yeah, after one of my favorite boyfriends from the other world, Mother Goose said. He was your boyfriend? Alex said with raised eyebrows. Of all the stories that Alex had heard over the years, how had Mother Goose managed to keep that to herself? Oh, I keep forgetting you from the other world, Mother Goose chuckled. <laughs> An old gal can dream, can't she? She snapped her fingers and another rocking chair appeared beside her. Have a seat, kiddo. It's good to see you. Alex had a seat, also happy to be reunited. For the last couple months, Mother Goose sightings had become fewer and fewer. For some reason, she avoided the fairy palace as much as possible these days and the twins were worried that the day would come when she would disappear forever. We haven't seen you in months, Alex said. Is this where you've been hiding? It is. Mother Goose said with a heavy sigh, I'm sorry I've been MIA, Alex. I miss you and your brother like crazy, but it's difficult being around the palace now that your grandmother's gone. Alex knew exactly how she felt, so she couldn't blame her. Yeah, believe me, I know. But why come here of all places? I love this place, Mother Goose said. It's got eye ceilings for Lester to fly around. It's very quiet. It has great views on a clear day. And the late giant and I have similar taste in bubbly. She pointed to the giant's tea cart in the corner of the room, where dozens of bottles taller than Alex were filled up with Mother Goose's favorite drink. That's a lifetime supply for me. Well, we sure miss seeing you around. Will you ever come back? Mother Goose hesitated to answer. I don't know. I haven't decided. Every night I hope I'll wake up the next day with a desire to rejoin humanity, but no luck so far. I just need more time, I guess. Mother Goose took a long swig of bubbly, and Alex noted a small leather-bound book resting in her lap. What are you reading? Alex asked. Oh, this, she said. It's just my old diary. Boy, I've had some adventures in my time. I used to write everything down. I always hoped one day when I was old, uh, finally locked up for good, there would be someone out there who'd appreciate it. May I? Alex asked, reaching for the diary. Mother Goose smiled and handed it to her. Alex flipped through the pages. There were hundreds and hundreds of entries dating back hundreds of years to the other world and the fairy tale world. There were pictures and flowers, leaves and letters folded between the pages. Wow, you certainly have lived, Alex said, impressed by the artifact. Yeah, I certainly did, Mother Goose said. Certainly did. Her choice of words concerned Alex. Did, she said. Why are you talking like it's over? You're not ready to throw in the towel yet, are you? Mother Goose sighed and her gaze drifted to the fireplace. She seemed sad, at least sadder than Alex had ever seen her before. Yeah, getting old is not for wimps, I'll tell you that much, Mother Goose said. 
When I was young, I wanted to live forever. There wasn't a bridge I didn't want to cross or a stone I didn't want to leave unturned. But then I reached a certain age and everything started to disappear. My friends started to die one at a time until none of them were left. The world is always changing, but one day you wake up and you realize it's changed without you. And there's no chance of catching up to it. Your adventures are over and you find yourself all alone with nothing but the memories. And then you just wait and wait and wait until it's your turn to meet your maker or return to the magic, as your grandmother always put it. Yeah, well, when that day comes, you pray someone you know will be waiting for you when you get there. It broke Alex's heart to hear her say such things, but Mother Goose, that can't be true, she said. You have more life left in your pinky than most people do in their entire bodies. The adventures aren't over, they'll just be different. Yeah, thank you, sweetheart, Mother Goose said with a smile. I certainly hope that's the case, but now it's your turn. What brings you to Castle the Giant? Alex closed her eyes tightly, willing herself not to cry. Oh, I've been ungodmothered by the fairy council. I ruined everything. Mother Goose choked on a swig of bubbly. What? She coughed. Can, can they do that? Well, apparently so. Why in the world would they do that? Mother Goose said. You're one of the brightest fairies this world has ever seen. Yeah, well, they believe my search for the masked man has gone too far and they think I've become destructive, Alex said. Oh, I doubt that, Mother Goose said. They've always thought doing nothing is better than doing something that might be harmful and make them look bad, but that's politics for you. No, it's true, Alex admitted. Lately, whenever I get overwhelmed, I completely lose control of myself and my powers. I attacked the council with lightning and then they made the decision. It was like someone else had taken over my body. I was just watching from inside. Wow, Mother Goose said. I'm sorry I missed it. Maybe they were right to demote me, Alex said, suddenly filling with self-doubt. Maybe it's best if I'm not the fairy godmother and, and, and they can focus on finding the 12 missing children from the corner kingdom and the 12 missing children from the charming kingdom. And I remember another time when a bunch of young people went missing. We called it Woodstock, but that's a different story, Mother Goose said. You're not gonna quit looking for the masked man though, are you? Alex shook her head. No, I can't stop, she said. No one believes me, but I know he's my dad. No matter how many times the fairy council tries to convince me I was just hallucinating, I know what I saw. He has my dad's eyes, his nose, his mouth. Who else could it have been? I won't be able to function properly until he's found. Mother Goose looked at Alex with large, sympathetic eyes. There was so much she wished she could tell her, but she had made the late fairy godmother a promise before she passed away, a promise that she intended to keep. Mother Goose took Alex's hand. I believe you, honey. Alex looked up at her with big, bright eyes. You do? And I've seen some pretty incredible things in my lifetime, Mother Goose said. They didn't always make sense, and they weren't always what people wanted to hear, but that doesn't mean they didn't happen. If you say you saw your father, then you saw your father. End of discussion. Alex was so thankful that someone was on her side. It brought tears to her eyes. But what do I do now? I'm the most wanted person in the kingdom and the council's hunting me down as we speak. Mother Goose rolled her eyes and waved the thought off. If I had a nickel for every time the council got their panties in a ruffle over me, I could afford to pay back all my gambling debts in both of the worlds. If you were, if I were you, I would consider it a blessing. You're no longer the fairy godmother or associated with the fairy council. So great. That means you can stop playing by your own rules. Let people be afraid of you for now. That fear will only turn into admiration when you find the masked man and prove you've been right all along. And what will the council have to say when that happens? They'll never be able to hold you back again. Mother Goose took another swig of the bubbly and nodded her head, content with her advice. And you know what else? Mother Goose added. I'm gonna help you. You will? A mischievous smile grew on her face. I've always wondered what it would be like to see those uppity, colorful know-it-alls get proven wrong. Yeah, count me in. For the first time in a very long while, Alex smiled. And we'll be playing by our own rules? I like the sound of that. Dun, dun, dun! I like the sound of it, too. Hey, Mary, how are you? How's Autumn?
Good chapter, you guys. I love when Mother Goose comes in. She's the best. <laughs> Gas teamwork. <laughs> it's true. Mother Goose is the goat. It's true. Good today. As of right now, she has her days and nights backwards. I mean, that's normal for a baby that's a week old. Totally normal. You don't know. That's you don't know? Little. They are. They don't know. They're too little. They don't know anything yet. So small. Too small. Not too small. So small. So small. Not too small. Just right small. She just had a baby and she named her Autumn. That's a good name. It's a good name. We know someone named Autumn. We do. We do. My days and nights are still. Becca, your days and nights are still mixed up, and you're too old for that. <laughs> it's true. I mean, you're pretty, you're not pretty early or something. That's days and nights from us. East Coast. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. Still not that bad. No, no. I mean, she also has four kids. Yeah. They don't really allow for much of that. Kelsey Rupert and I said, what a game. I was screaming, oh, uh, um, Rosie's a, a Steelers fan also. Hey, and she said, what a game. Hey, Anderson. Good Thank you, Brittany. You. Yeah, it was a good game. We, we were on the edge of our seats at many a point. It was wild. It was wild. You have from me. Let me know when you see, and I'll get that done this morning. You have a from me. I don't know what that means. Oh, okay. That makes more sense. I was like, <laughs> you've got a friend from me. <laughs> That was funny. Um, yes. Um, yeah, there's a, everyone send the Vikings some luck tonight. Night games are not our friends. Okay, Amanda, we'll be watching tonight. That kicker, though, I started to feel bad for him. We were talking about that, right? Didn't you say oh, you thought no, he was going to get fired today? He's yeah. Totally his job, so yeah, yeah, so yeah. It feels so bad for kickers when they just, like, don't have... Do you think he's really going to get fired today? Oh, yeah, 100%. You really think he's... They're just going to sack him today. They're like, bye, that's enough of you. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll look at the news later, and I'll tell you when he gets sacked. Okay. It's, it's going to happen. It's it's just... It's just kickers, if they don't if they do not do it, they just replace them. Unless, but they can literally... Unless they... Like, he was, like, a draft pick for them, or, like... Is he was, new or not new? Um... I'm not sure. I don't follow the Rams that close to know like about their kicker. <laughs> they a wild amount of following them. Um, but there so would have to be. what happens on Monday morning after a game like that? Um, what do you mean? So like they just have a meeting and they're like, "This guy sucks. Let's sack him." Yeah, yeah, Facebook. And then they just do it publicly. Well, not publicly. They'll pull him into an office and be like, "Hey, we're we're releasing you." I mean, it depends on his contract and all sorts of stuff, but he's a kicker, he, but it's not too hard to release them. Wow. But <clears throat> I, mean, you... I mean, it depends. Like, they're also, they're not a team that thinks they're going to go anywhere this year, so maybe they'll just, like, try to work with them for one more week and see if it gets better. So you, you don't know, but, you know, a lot of the time that doesn't end well for those guys. Wow. Yeah. And how will they get a new one? Well, there's, there's, <laughs> Excuse there's me. people that, like... <laughs> We're on teams last year that didn't make teams for some reason or like had an injury. Amanda said, happened to our kicker a few years back. He had one job and missed four field goals in one game. Yikes. Who's, who's the kicker? What team? Uh, what team, Amanda? Remind me. I know you said it just a bit ago, but you know, oh, Vikings? Said, you know I got into reading again because of you, and now I read 80 books this year. That's amazing. That's Vikings. Awesome. Yeah, Vikings. Yeah. That's amazing. Vikings have not a good kicker luck over the years for sure. Everyone always tells me no one reads anymore, and I'm like, that's not true. I read every single day. <laughs> every single day. Mm -hmm. I will not stop. You will not stop me. And I will, I will force other people to read with me. Can't stop, won't stop. Can't stop, won't stop. Will 10 out of 10 force other people into reading. It's a good habit. Becca, you fake read through me. It's not fake. Um, we're talking about the Rams, Mary. Their kicker was crappity crap craps and um, might get day. fired. Yeah. So then, wait, how do they get a new one? How do they get a new one? Yeah. Well, there's kickers on the waiver wire. There's guys that weren't signed to teams. There's guys on practice squads. Well, actually, no. You don't, get, you don't hold kickers on practice squads. But there's just guys out there that are like didn't make teams this year for whatever reason. And they'll just or take like one of them? Had injuries so they didn't make teams or whatever. So they'll practice a 
they'll like do a tryout or something like that and have a couple guys come in this week. Sure. Like fly in two or three, see who's who's working out. But isn't it hard to just like jump into a team that's already been together the whole like time? Except for the kicker position because it's such a its own thing sort of like thing because like essentially the ball's a snapped and you have to kick it straight right like the, you don't have to learn all the, it's not complex like the rest of the playbook like a okay. kicking playbook's pretty standard got it okay all right yeah that's amazing shira i love that <laughs> i have no idea what my streak is but it's it's something kickers are a totally different entity yeah i read so much that i bought a kindle because i can read when i go up that's amazing i can't do we were just talking yesterday about how like my brain doesn't do ebooks. I wish I could because I would probably read even more than I already do. But yeah. my brain, like I get too. I need paper. I need the paper when it's on a device. I just get distracted. Like I tried, like John, you know our friend John. I originally bought his book on um, my phone just to like download it really fast before before it like went viral and all that stuff. And um, and I couldn't get into it. And then when we read it in the physical book. I read through it perfectly, you know? So there's, it's not the books. It's something about the medium that my brain just like can't do well, it. There's something nice about turning a page. There's something nice about holding it. Yeah. Holding like a plastic device and then scrolling. It's just not the same. It's shitty. Yeah. It doesn't feel good. <clears throat> yeah, I love audiobooks. I'm a big, big audiobook fan. I listen to them literally all day while I'm working, while I'm driving, everything. If I'm if I'm not making slime on live, if I'm making slime, I've got an audiobook in my ear. My sister refuses to even try ebooks. I, I don't really blame her. I tried and it just doesn't do it. It doesn't do anything. So I don't blame you. Know, real books, they don't work for you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can't focus on audiobooks, unfortunately. Yeah, it's it's probably the same kind of like thing as the ebook thing, you know? Yeah. Well, <clears throat> It's going well. She wants the book holding the book, turning the pages, the smell. I agree. I agree with her. I completely agree with her. I felt that on my phone, but the paper white Kindle is easier. Yeah. I haven't tried that. Why doesn't somebody make a Kindle that's like holds like a paperback and you can turn it to the little electronic pages? Uh, I don't, I don't know even know how you would do that. They'll get there. Yeah. There'll be a Kickstarter for it that turns out to be a scam in about three years. <sighs> because like that, like that, that uh, like paper thin um, display technology is starting to happen. Mm. I don't blame her, Rosie. I don't blame her. They're saying you should design it. <laughs> I don't <laughs> I think am, that's within your skill set. I am not a engineer. <laughs> yeah, I hate reading on my phone, but Kindle's better to me. That's fair. I think a lot of people feel that way. <laughs> it sounds like Secret Boyfriend has a new invention. We are not inventors. <laughs> I, have so I am an inventor of ideas. Yeah, me too. I was going to say, there's so many ideas that I would like to have produced if ever I had the, like, capability to make them. I've thought of so many cool ideas. Um, and name I one. just... Name one. But then what if they steal it? <laughs> All right, everybody, Pinky promise you're not going to steal it. Everybody, Pinky promise you're not going to steal my idea if I tell you. I have some, like, yeah. million-dollar ideas, literally. All right, so, mittens for cats. <laughs> <laughs> Kitten mittens. <laughs> Genius. High five. Good. I can make those because I can knit. Yeah, both my best friend and my sister read books on their phone. I just can't. Yeah, no, I can't either. Okay, so one of them. Okay, so you guys know Squishmallows, right? No. We all know what a Squishmallow is, everybody? I don't know. Yes, you do. You bought one for your niece for... Oh, okay, remember? Yeah, Squishmallow? Know everybody what's knows what's 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 what Squishmallows are, right? Okay. Does anybody know what Moon Pods are? Do you know what a Moon Pod is? <laughs> Everyone knows what a moon pod No, is. less people no, know what the, okay. know. the moon pods were these like really fancy ergonomic adult bean bags. Oh. They're really comfortable. A friend of mine has one and I sat in it and they're like literally the most comfortable thing on the planet, but they're really nice. And I want to make something that is uh, a combination uh, of the two things. And so it's the ergonomic comfort of the moon pod with the character and the cuteness of the squishmallow. I'm surprised that doesn't exist. Right? It's genius. Every kid would have one in their room, first of all, and I would also have one in my room. Yes, it basically is like the human sized dog bed, but com more comfortable and also has a character <laughs> and has like a story dog. with it, right? Because that's part of the cool thing about the squishmallows is that they have a story and they're themed and all that stuff. So you'd have your little like comfy 
cuddle buddy that's that you can sit on and read on. Kawaii. So that was one of my ideas. Thank you, Nissa. I appreciate you thinking it's genius. It is genius. Right? Every kid would have one in their room. Kickstart it and then just never deliver. I don't want to do that. <laughs> they make them for kids. They do? But are they the quality of the moon pod? That's the thing. Bean bags with characters exist, but it's ha making sure that they feel like the moon pod. Because a lot of bean bags are Terrible. not comfy. Bean bag covered with squishmallow moon blood dupe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hi, Grace. And then I have another idea that's actually for moms that I came up with specifically on my walks every day with Mommins. with Zoe and Catherine, but I can't say it because it's actually a million dollar idea. And if uh, I could ever get anyone to produce it, I will be a millionaire. It's literally a million dollar idea. <clears throat> um, so I came up with it watching Catherine struggle with something and I was like, mm, we can do better. And I told a technology. bunch of moms that I know, and they were all like, yes, I need that. And I was like, mm -hmm. You told them your idea? The moms? Like, moms in my family, yeah. Uh, okay. They're not going to steal it from me. You never know. Um, Becca, mm -hmm. you are almost past, your kids are almost past the age where you'd need it. So by the time it comes into existence, it won't really be useful for you anymore. It's for, for people Baby with younger ends. kids. Um, but it is extremely <laughs> useful. It could probably go on Shark Tank, actually. It's like that kind of good. You know that Mark Cuban screw us? Well, no. <laughs> I don't want to do that. It's for Mary. That's Mark right. Cuban. I hate it's his for Mary. squinty face. I'm sorry that you hate him. Do you hate his teams also? Yeah. Yeah. And he's a... Did you see that he made a post saying, hey, Taylor Swift, if you're going to date a, a ball player, you might as well date one of mine. We can get together and do marketing. Cynical. Very cynical. I was like, wow. Wow. Yes. Um, anyway, I'm going to go get started with the day because I have a lot of slams to mail out and stuff to package for the restock and all sorts of goodies and things like that. But, um, I, uh, will see you all tomorrow morning. His sister, my sister hates Selena Gomez. Really? Why? I like Selena Gomez, actually. She's pretty good in that show. She's pretty great, actually. I think she really <laughs> came into her own as an adult. I don't know anything about I don't know why hate, I just but... hate her face. That's what she says. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't hate her face. Uh, her face is fine. Um, she seems like a swell gal. She seems like a swell gal. <laughs> 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 um, anyway, I'm going to go pack orders and um, get them shipped. We don't have live tonight because we have a tradition <coughs> on Monday nights where we go to a local place and enjoy the football game. And I answer all my emails. Well, and watch the Vikings. And guess what? I like her cousins, so we will cheer for the Vikings. So we're going to cheer for the Vikings. Who are they playing? Who are they playing? Amanda? I bet she knows. I can't remember. Well, we're about to find out. I bet Amanda will tell us. Is it the 49ers? I no, better know. not be. No, I don't think it is. 49ers. Oh, is that bad? Are 49ers really good this year? Sad for you guys. They're really good. Yeah. Uh oh. But you never know. Brock Purdy didn't play well last week, so you never know. Anything could happen. Yeah, but anything could happen. She it's said, gonna "Yeah, be a, it's, it's going to be, be a tough. good game." Yeah. It's gonna be a game All right. Well, I mean, that's something about that is that it's more interesting to watch, right? It's a good matchup. Yeah. It's a good matchup. I believe in Kirk Cousins. Okay. Vikings right. fans don't, but I do. Do you believe in him, Amanda? <laughs> I'm, I'm interested to see, but um, m many of you know, Mondays are the days that I answer the majority of my emails and things like that. So if you have been waiting <coughs> for something from me, she said, I do, I like him. Cool, me too. Um, today it will be the response because I sit down for multiple hours and answer emails on Mondays. So I'll probably do that. And then I'll probably do more brainstorming for NaNoWriMo because it's coming up in one week and I need to get ready. Yes. All right. Bye, guys.